And welcome back. Well, women's soccer has come a long way, especially with the success of the women's U.S. national team over the years. But new leadership here in Wisconsin is trying to improve the experience and quality, not just for female players, but for coaches, referees, and administrators. The Wisconsin Women's Soccer Advisory Council and the Wisconsin Youth Soccer Association is teaming up for the first Women in Soccer Symposium. Shannon Smith is a former pro player, and Alicia Pelton is a gender equity expert both our board members too for the advisory council we just mentioned great to here. see you ladies thank you Thanks so much you. Uh, let's just talk first the the mission of the organization and why you felt it was important to have something like this uh, you know, one of the things that kind of started it was looking around and understanding that you are what you see. And we kind of felt like there wasn't enough female leadership present at, at board tables, uh, as officials leading games, as, as rule makers, um, female coaches. Uh, and so we were looking to kind of promote and support and provide opportunity for them to feel confident. Um, and there's a there's a lot that's going on in, in the world in general for, for women in sports. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this like something it. you see pretty specifically and predominantly in soccer, though, that there's a, a lack of women? I know you talked about across the board, but in soccer itself, is that uh, even more so? I would say it's pretty, it, it, it's pretty lacking in all sports. Mm -hmm. There is no, I mean, volleyball is actually a pretty good sport. They do a good job of Softball. creating. Um, Softball is not really as great as you think it is. Really? Yeah. Um, cycling is, is really low. Um, Hockey. Basketball. Hockey's. Very mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there, there are most sports. Um, it's it's too bad, but I but there is a big movement nationally and internationally right now, and so hopefully these type of organizations where it's a statewide where we're, we're building those grassroots and reaching that um, top of the national level and trying to trying to build it all together so we can work together and we can collaborate and we can cooperate and we can do a really good job of um, just growing and educating and um, making more opportunities. Mm -hmm. One of the key things I would think is not only including women and reaching out to women and having women participate, but also reaching out to men and including them as part of the, yeah. the solution. Yeah, so, so men um, men are part of this world, <laughs> so, and they're part of our world, so it's really important that they understand how to coach girls, um, and they're part of it, because if, if you don't have them step up and help and, and empower and engage and mentor and open their social networks, then it's never going to change. So we need to all work together. So they're at part, we want to try to encourage women and, and feel comfortable and confident within our own social circles, and then grow that so that we're all together, and then gender's really not an issue, that we're just hiring the best coach and the best official um, going forward. Yeah, and as we look to like our younger kids who are playing, because I think as they're younger, they're, they're playing equally, they're, you know, they're wanting to, but sometimes maybe language stands in the way or things like that. Are there any tips that you can say to a parent or a team out there that they could say, hey, just take this one word or this phrase or whatnot out of your vernacular? Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. well, as a, as a as a leader in a club and I work for the state, you know, I think in the end, you know, when we're teaching our coaching courses and we're working together and, you know, the bottom line is more men, uh, our men coach both boys and girls and our women tend to coach the girls and you kind of see this shift in how we interact with each other. So really, I just think it's, it's relaxed and it's a player. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's your craft as a coach, too, and as a teacher to interact differently. We, each kid needs something different, whether they're a boy or a girl. So it's your craft to kind of even, even the playing field and use a player's name. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've, I've read uh, a long time ago about even women in leadership roles in business mm -hmm. at the highest level, executive level, is that oftentimes women don't seek out leadership positions. So it's important for us to empower ourselves mm -hmm. to ask for the job or the position or the head coaching spot or whatever it is, right? Yeah, so it, in sports it's really difficult in the sense that there's so few women up there that when we look at that job, we're like, it's gonna be really hard to get. And another research shows that when there is a job up and a job opening that a man will um, apply for the job if he only has 60% of the qualification and for a woman it's 100%. So it's just a confidence thing. Mm -hmm. We're not really sure whether we're going to get the job. So it is on the leaders to actually go out and hunt those women down. That's what we're trying to do is trying to organize that group of women so that they're easier to find, they're easier to get. Okay. Part of that is coming to the Women in Soccer Symposium. It's for all sports, men and women, but that is the focus.
focus women in uh, soccer symposium Saturday, December 8th, WIWomeninsoccer.com. What's the name of the person who you're having there as your keynote speaker? Our keynote speaker is Anson Dorrance. Uh, he's the head coach now for decades at uh, the University of Chapel Hill, uh, Love it. Carolina, and Thanks, he, he's fantastic. World Cup coach. Thank you.